Fully understanding the processes of life and the causes of disease remain two of the great challenges in biology and medicine. Although decoding the human genome was a major step forward in human biology, understanding the information hidden in the three billion base pairs that make it up represents a computational problem that can only be achieved using advanced computers and intelligent software. The CMBI the Netherlands Centre for Molecular and Biomolecular Informatics is a world leader in the field of computational molecular biology. This is a story of how researchers at the CMBI are using their expertise to help cure disease. All living organisms, including humans, animals, plants and even bacteria, are made up of cells, each of which has a nucleus that contains the organism's complete DNA. Zoom in on the DNA and you see that it consists of two strands twisted together to form a helix. Although they are very long, each strand of DNA is actually made up of only four different building blocks, known as bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. The order of these bases determines the function and genetic information in the DNA. Specific sections of DNA, known as genes, provide the code needed to assemble so-called amino acids into proteins. So it is the order of the bases in the gene that is translated into the order of amino acids, which is different for each protein. The amino acids that are assembled into a protein have the characteristic of either attracting or repelling one another, depending on their type. Because of this attraction or repulsion, a protein molecule folds into a unique shape as it is produced. This folding plays an important part in determining the function of the protein. Proteins are the workhorses of the human body, controlling the processes that keep us alive as well as being important constituents of organs and tissues, such as muscles. For example, proteins in the retinal cells within our eyes have a unique shape that allows them to absorb light energy and trigger the nerve responses that allow us to see. Special types of protein called enzymes allow us to break down the carbohydrates in our food so that we can have the energy to live. Other types of protein can recognize disease organisms that enter our bodies so that our immune system can fight them and keep us healthy. As we've seen, the order of the bases in DNA is translated into the order of amino acids in a protein, which in turn defines a protein's shape and function. In such a complex system, it is not surprising that errors can occur. In fact, Small mutations in our DNA are very common. They are what make each of us unique, because the resultant changes in protein structure determine characteristics such as the colour of our hair. However, while some mutations provide the richness of human existence, others can be harmful. This is because mutations in DNA can also lead to the production of proteins that do not function correctly. Remember, that the function of a protein is defined by its amino acid sequence and consequent shape. So a different base in DNA can result in a different amino acid in a protein, and this can disturb the shape and function of the protein. Many inherited diseases are caused by such changes. For example, DNA mutations that cause structural changes in the light-sensitive proteins located in our eyes can prevent them from stimulating nerve impulses resulting in congenital blindness. We are located at the Radboud Medical Center and our hospital sees thousands of patients every year. Some of these patients have a genetic disorder. The genetics department uses all kinds of very modern techniques to determine which mutation causes the disease. And we then calculate 
why that mutation causes the disease. As part of the diagnostic process, scientists at the hospital's Department of Human Genetics analyze their DNA using the latest DNA sequencing techniques. In our department, we compare the DNA of patients with DNA of healthy controls. And we want to know which DNA variation in the patient is causing disease. This is a very big challenge. And for this, we collaborate with the CMBI and use their expertise in interpretation. At the CMBI, computer simulation and visualization software is used to generate and analyze three-dimensional protein structures, displaying them on a massive 3D virtual reality screen so that they can be studied in detail. Yasara, an advanced software package, is used to predict protein structures and to calculate the structural effects of mutations. An online web server called Hope can even analyze mutations automatically. Working in collaboration with other departments, hospitals and other universities, the conclusions drawn at the CMBI can be used to improve patient treatment or act as the starting point for developing new drugs. Some years ago, we were studying split hand, split foot syndrome. This is a condition where people are born without fingers and without toes. And after a few years, we found the gene. And we were delighted and excited. And we started studying P63, as the gene is called, for its function and what goes wrong in these families. And then we got stuck. But when we looked more closely, we got really intrigued and puzzled because you see, the mutations were all of a very particular kind and we couldn't make sense of it. So we asked the question, how can we understand what's going on? And the only way to get an answer was to go and see the people at CMBI. In response to Professor Bronner's request, the CMBI team started work on predicting the structure of the P63 protein. At the time, the structure of the P63 protein was not known, but bioinformaticians at CMBI found that they could predict its structure using a technique called homology modeling. When they analyzed the mutation suspected of causing EEC syndrome, they found that all of these mutations affected the protein DNA binding. This insight was extremely useful because now pharmaceutical researchers can start thinking about a possible cure for EEC syndrome patients. Researchers at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden, started working on solving the problem. They believe that if they could find a small molecule that improved the dimerization of the two P63 protein molecules, they could potentially restore the protein's normal function. After testing many different small molecule compounds, they eventually found one that could bind the two protein molecules and stabilize the dimer. They call this compound Prima. The Prima molecule is now being tested in cells from patients with split hand, split foot malformation syndrome. And the results look really promising. And I'd like to think that one day we may have contributed to a cure for the various problems that these people have. This real-life example illustrates how the virtual world of structural bioinformatics can help researchers to study the effects of genetic mutations in real patients and help in the development of new drugs to counteract them.